This is Mark from Team How To, and we're teaching the masses how to. Hey guys, it's Mark. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about adding a rhythm track or a metronome to your Audacity project. Um, this would be used in a scenario where you're recording your own music, whether that's you're playing the guitar or you're singing, any scenario where you would need to use a metronome. And uh, you might use that for overdubbing, just things like that when you're layering your voice scenario like Anya, if you know her, check her stuff out. She layers her voice in there, and so it sounds like angels singing, but it's just her own voice layered like 30, 50 times. It sounds crazy, but it's really an awesome effect, but you could do that with this. But anyway, um, let me tell you what that is real quick. Uh, a rhythm track generates a sequence of regular pulses at a selected tempo, and so basically it's a metronome. What I'm going to do is add a metronome rhythm track to a project, and I'm going to go through all of the settings because there's a bunch of them, and they're not too bad, but they can be a little confusing. So let's just start off by saying if you don't have Audacity installed, you can go to audacityteam.org and download it. Obviously, you hit the download link and pick your pick your weapon there, then you basically download it and install. It's very, very solid program. It's not very buggy. I've never heard anybody say anything bad about it, and it's absolutely free, so you can't get better than that. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to go to Audacity here, and let's add a track. Start off by going to Generate and Rhythm Track. Now, another way to do that, let me hit exit out of this. You could do Alt, G, R, Enter. There you go. So now, let's just start from the top and work our way down. First, we have the tempo which sounds probably somewhat obvious what tempo is if you if you're interested in this at all is a total number of beats per minute and the default as you can see is set at 120 obviously you can run that as far down as 30 beats a minute or up to 300 beats obviously just depends how much beating you want to be done the next setting down we have are the beats per bar and the beats per bar is or you might know them as the measure you've heard of probably that songs are in 4/4 four, four, or in 3/4 three, time 3/4 three, measure uh, if you if you know anything about music, if you're interested in this, you probably already know this, but let me just say the first beat of each bar is always the louder than the remaining beats in the bar. So, for example, a three-beat bar will sound like a waltz, a three-four time signature. Four beats per bar will sound like a four-four, a, a march, or most popular songs, in fact. So, a quick example, let me just show you. We'll do the four-four bar real quick, and here it is. One, two, three, four, one, and you can, oops, you can see that the, the one is always the, the stronger beat. Now, if we were to change that to a three, four, you can instantly hear the difference there on the preview. Three, one, two, three, one, there you go. So, there you go. There's a quick example of what that is and, and how that changes, but you probably know that if you're here anyway. The next setting down we have is the swing amount, and this is a very useful little feature. When set to zero, each beat is the exact same length for the specified tempo. When it's set to a non-zero amount, the alternate beats are delayed or advanced to give it a swing feel. At the maximum or minimum setting, the rhythm plays with triplet timing. And for anybody who doesn't know what triplet timing is, that's simply a triplet is a group of three notes played in the time of two. So you probably either know what that means or, or, or it's not that important to you. The next setting down is the number of bars, somewhat self-explanatory. Uh, the beats per bar is repeated for a chosen number of bars. The default is 16, and a combination of tempo, beats per bar, and number of bars determine the length of the generated track, unless the rhythm track duration is specified. And you can see the rhythm track is right below it. So what it says here, we need to set this to zero if we're going to use the rhythm track duration. So if we came in here and made this three or four, Five. I'm just putting in with the keyboard, and we could make it that long. So I will just make this back to zero, and we'll just use this. Let's say it's going to be a 33 bars. Okay, so cool. And the next one down is the start time offset. It says the basically the silence before the first beat. And so let's just say you wanted it to start at 20 seconds in, set that to 20 seconds, and that's when it starts. And next thing down is the beat sound. There's the the normal metronome sound, which let me just show you that. There you go. That's hopefully what you expected. There's a few others that I could see maybe using. Um, let's see. Cowbell. Very interesting. We'll hit a preview. There you go. And that's 
probably it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You can play around with them if you want. Next value down we have here is the MIDI pitch of the strong beat, which is the first beat in each bar. Uh, this value dis decides which pitch is actually going to be used. For instance, 84 is a C. Uh, middle C is 60. So you can just kind of go from there. A C sharp would be a 61 if it was the, the, the one above the middle C. And like if you needed, like I say, a G sharp, that would be 92. So you probably know what you're looking for in these cases. And finally, the last one is the MIDI pitch of the weak beat or all of the other beats that are not the strong beat or first beat. So they all sound the same. The default is set at 80, which is a G sharp and octave above the strong one right now. A couple of quick tips uh, noteworthy. Uh, once the track has been created, the track can be edited uh, like any other audio track. Another one would be when you're exporting your finished work, use the track control panel to either close or mute the rhythm track so that it's not audible on the exported file. So let's say, for instance, we go ahead and click on here and you've got the track in here and you've got your full audio down here. You could either click here to exit or just hit mute and that way it won't be exported with the rest of your sound so you don't have it in there. Now, as I mentioned, you can go back in after the fact and do some editing. So let's just say we use this. I'll show you what it sounds like real quick. There you go. But let's just say for some reason we want to switch this to a different, say a different noise on the first beat or something. We can bump this up to say 100. And let's just make it three, four times just so we have a different feel. There we go. So now when we hit play. So there you go. Kind of get the feel for that. So let's go back in one more time. I'm going to do Alt G R enter. That's the quick way for me. And we'll show you what these other buttons down here are real quick. Uh, the manage button is kind of what it sounds like. It manages things. If I decide this is a certain preset I'm going to use over and over, I can save it. I can go put everything back to the factory defaults by hitting this button. That's great. There's the preview button, which we've used a couple times. It just kind of gives you a preview of the sound. And then the OK and cancel. So I think we understand what all those mean. I'll just hit OK. And that's about all we have for that. Hopefully you found that useful, and hopefully you'll subscribe and check out some more of our videos. I have plenty of them on Audacity. I thank you very much. Hey, did you remember to subscribe?